What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got our Week 12 Waiver Wire Rankings. And even though the list is a bit sparse, we're still going to go over the top names to know. If you guys enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe. Also, check us out online at adpfantasy.com. Thank you for all the support. It has been awesome. Go ahead, become a part of the free newsletter. Get early exclusive content access. Also, become a member and get personalized fantasy advice throughout the season. All the details into the description. But for now, let's get right into it. We kick things off at the quarterback position where we start with probably the hottest waiver wire pickup in week 12, and that will be Baker Mayfield. As disappointing as he has been at that position leading up to this week, he has a great matchup in week 12 versus the Miami Dolphins. Need we say more, but look at the facts. Last week, they gave up a huge day versus Josh Allen. And Baker Mayfield coming off a pretty decent performance versus the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. This is as positive of a matchup as you could want. Baker Mayfield will headline a lot of additions at the quarterback spot for Week 12. Next, we've got Sam Darnold, who this last week, almost 300 yards passing and four touchdowns. Look. It's been rough for Sam Darnold, but we've been saying it over and over. His stretch for a couple of weeks now and moving forward as well is as great as you could want it. Absolutely amazing matchups. Week 12, he has got a contest versus the Oakland Raiders. That is a defense that can be beat. And as up and down as Sam Darnold has been, he is still one of the top options at this point in time off of waivers probably a lot of people hesitant to take a chance on him just because of how hot and cold he has been but in plus matchups he has been somewhat reliable our third and final quarterback is ryan Tannehill. the titans coming off of the bye week get a home matchup versus the jacksonville jaguars and the jaguars just gave up a whole lot of points versus the Indianapolis Colts. Now, that defense, again, is one of those units that has on and off days. But the reason we're highlighting Tannehill here is since he started for the Tennessee Titans over Marcus Mariota, he's put together, say what you will, even with some garbage time performances, decent stat lines, and the, the ceiling is there, so is the floor, but I think you could probably rely on between 15 and 20 points on Tannehill for week 12. Getting to our running backs, let's right out the gate start with the names to know in Jonathan Williams and potentially Naheem Hines here, but definitely a focus on Jonathan Williams as Marlon Mack exited the contest versus the Jaguars with a broken hand. And after he left, both Williams and Hines had great performances, but it was Williams more so than Hines that was getting more usage, but we know that'll be the case. Hines is more of that pass catching guy, someone that has more value in PPR formats. That's why we mention him here. He's probably the guy in those half point, full point PPR formats that you'd target if you don't get a chance to get Williams, but Williams surely looks like the running back that will get more usage. Now, a name that could potentially throw a wrench into this is Jordan Wilkins because he wasn't available uh, last week. If he does come back, then you know, there's going to be three options here, and maybe neither one of them uh, is going to be one worth starting on a week-to-week -week basis, uh, unlike Marlon Mack. So just keep an eye out on that. But for now, if it's just these two guys, Williams is the name to know. The Colts have an amazing offensive line, so whoever you put back there for the most part will be successful. Next, we have got another pair of teammate running backs in Adrian Peterson and Darius Geis. Now, Peterson did get a little bit more usage, but Geis did salvage his day with a 40-yard receiving touchdown this last week. But the reason we want to highlight both of them is because they will be facing the Detroit Lions. That defense has been getting taken advantage of for a while. Last week was no exception. Both Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott were successful. So, there will definitely be opportunities for both Adrian Peterson and Geis. Personally, I believe Geis will, in a couple of weeks, dethrone Adrian Peterson. But for now, probably both these guys, for the most part, will be getting 50-50 splits. Geis does have a higher ceiling, however, because of his pass-catching potential. 
Our third and final running back is Bo Scarborough of the Detroit Lions. 14 carries, 55 yards, and a rushing touchdown this last week. And apparently forget about Ty Johnson, forget about J.D. McKissick. Scarborough coming out of nowhere is the hot hand. He's the name to know now. But buyer beware. This could be Ty Johnson 2.0 all over again. There's no elite running back option for the Detroit Lions after carry on Johnson. Maybe they do go with the hot hand, but it's equally as possible that it returns to a running back by committee if Scarborough struggles early. The favorable part of this here is that the Detroit Lions will be facing the Washington Redskins, so do keep an eye out on this. Will a guy like Ty Johnson play? Uh, if not, obviously that helps the status of Scarborough, but again, just as likely as Scarborough is to become maybe the lead guy for the Detroit Lions, it's just as possible for him to return back to non-relevance for the Lions and especially in fantasy. So do expect this to be a gamble if you decide to pursue Scarborough. Next, getting to our wide receivers, we start with a pair of teammates in James Washington and Deontay Johnson of the Steelers, and there's two reasons why we like these guys. First and foremost, Juju Smith nicked up last week versus the Browns concussion, now a knee issue is coming up, but the second one, more important, is they've got a great matchup versus the Cincinnati Bengals defense, which has been absolutely horrible all year long, and as mediocre as Mason Rudolph is, and whether he's getting hit in the head by a helmet or not, he should still be able to have some success versus the Bengals. Now, obviously, it'll probably be a rush attack type of focus, but without Juju Smith out, both of these guys will get targets. I could see either one of them getting about 50 yards and a touchdown, which would get you over 10 points at that position. So something to consider. Obviously, you have to track the health of Juju Smith going forward. But right now, more likely than not, he will miss week 12. If he somehow does suit up, you go ahead and downgrade both Washington and Johnson. Our second and final pairing of wide receivers is that of Darius Slayton and Sterling Shepard of the Giants. Now, New York coming off of the bye week. And Sterling Shepard has been out for a while with concussion issues. But reports are that, you know, He's gotten some practice in, potentially could return in week 12. That would be a welcome addition to this offense. He is that wide receiver two, potentially wide receiver one, uh, right with Golden Tate for Daniel Jones. But if he continues to remain out, then we have got our second guy in Darius Slayton that has been great in the absence of Sterling Shepard. He absolutely went off uh, before the bye week for the Giants. Unfortunately, here is the fact that the Giants have a matchup with the Chicago Bears secondary, which has done a great job versus opposing wide receivers. And this will definitely cap the ceiling of both of these wide receivers. But this could be a great week to potentially stash a guy like Sterling Shepard moving forward. Getting to our tight end position, we begin with Jacob Hollister of the Seahawks. Now, even though Seattle coming off the bye week, Hollister has been great the two weeks before that, finding success in the end zone. And because Seattle's returning from the bye, his ownership could be lower than expected. Go ahead, check that, and potentially add him in a contest versus the Philadelphia Eagles where that secondary can be exposed. And obviously, no Will Disley, Luke Wilson not expected to play. So Hollister is pretty much the only remaining tight end. Russell Wilson does look at the tight end, and even though Hoster is a bit touchdown dependent, he's gotten plenty of targets these last few weeks. If Tyler Lockett is limited, even more so. I really like Hollister in week 12. Our second and final tight end is Ryan Griffin of the Jets, who absolutely blew up this last week, over 100 yards receiving and a touchdown, and that's not the first time he's done that this season. Now, factor into this that there's no more Chris Herndon, and his next couple of matchups defensively are absolutely great. This will probably be your last chance to go ahead and add Ryan Griffin if you need help at the tight end position, like a lot of us do in fantasy. Griffin could be that guy, the potential Chris Herndon replacement that so many of us were excited for, but that we were let down by. Maybe Griffin will be the guy that gets you out of that pickle.
And finally, getting to our defenses, we begin with the New Orleans Saints, who last week had a pretty successful outing versus Jameis Winston, and now hosts the Carolina Panthers and one Kyle Allen. The guy has been an absolute turnover machine for several weeks now. He got killed by the Atlanta Falcons. Now going on the road versus New Orleans for the first time with potentially Marshawn Lattimore returning, this spells huge day for the Saints any which way you look at it. I love New Orleans versus this Panthers offense that is pretty much only Christian McCaffrey. It's way one-dimensional, and when you force Kyle Allen to beat you through the air, you will get at least one turnover, if not more. Saints could be the top defense of Week 12. Our second and final defense is the Pittsburgh Steelers, who have a great matchup versus the Cincinnati Bengals in Week 12. I believe this defense will rebound after the disappointing outing it had versus the Browns. Maybe some people kind of panicked and went ahead and dropped them or uh, are going to go ahead and sit them. If you are in that boat, I really do urge you hold on to the Steelers. And if you're someone that does see the Steelers dropped in your league, I'd go ahead and try and get them in that second wave of waiver wire pickups so with that we wrap up our look into our week 12 waiver wire targets and as always let me hear in the comment section did you agree disagree with this list are there guys that we left off list them in the comments along with any other fantasy questions you guys might have if you enjoyed like subscribe also check us out online at adpfantasy.com become a part of the free newsletter for exclusive content become a member to get personalized fantasy advice all the details in the description but for now we'll see you guys in future videos